As a subject for my assignment on digital painting, I'm going to do a portrait of, of Waldo from Where is Waldo, but as a werewolf. And so I have multiple inspirations here in different ways. Remember, it's a digital painting as long as I don't see line art at the end of it. So I can have line art and digital coloring as inspirations, but my end product is going to be a digital painting. And there might be inspirations for certain energy and effects. There might be inspiration for certain lighting. There might be inspiration for certain angles. And I like this kind of hipster Waldo here for the angle. I like the glasses here. And he looks a little bit more like the Waldo hairstyle. So that's going to be some inspiration for that. And then I like kind of the werewolf energy here and some of the, the marks here. Because remember, this is going to be a stylized painting. It doesn't need to match any one photo. So I'm actually going to do a screen grab of all of my inspiration. And the reason I'm going to do that is so I can have it all open in Photoshop easily so I can steal colors from any one of these images without having to go between different Photoshop files. So I posted them into Canvas as my inspiration reference. And then I made a screen grab of it. So let's say you're doing a friend of yours, you're doing a painting of them. It's probably a good idea to take multiple photos of them, put them all on screen or into one file, so you have them all in one place. I also don't want to lean too heavily on any just one photo, especially if I'm trying to get likeness, because any flaws in that photo, any weirdness to the, the, the lens length or to the lighting, handicaps what I can do with the painting. All right, so let's get started. First, I'm going to open up my reference in Photoshop. Doesn't matter how big or small it is because we're just looking at it. Next, I'm going to open up a new file in Photoshop. This is a complete raster project. So I say File New, and I get to set the size and the resolution because I'm going to be creating all my own pixels. So I don't want to create them too small. So I'm going to make it 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall. If I were doing an animal that was kind of longer, like maybe I want to do an iguana, I might do 14 inches wide, 11 inches tall. So 11 by 14. The resolution is what I call our lab resolution, 50 pixels per inch higher than professional uh, printing standard, and that is 350 pixels per inch. I like that because it keeps it not overly large for the computer. But if I wanted to print it at 16 by 20, I still have enough resolution to do that. And that's the largest we can print in the lab, practically. All right, so now I have these two files, one of reference and one that's just blank white at high resolution. And what I want to do is set up the computer screen like I have in the assignment where one is next to the other. Now you can have it where your reference is open in preview and kind of floating, but it's ideal, and we have nice big screens here, it's ideal if you can have them both open in Photoshop and side by side. So the way to do that is to go to Window and Arrange and say Two Up Vertical. And that will allow for two windows to be open in Photoshop, and if you're doing something really horizontal like an iguana, you can also do window arrange two up horizontal, right? But for me, vertical makes more sense. And if I click on the border and kind of collapse it a little bit and then click on this one and zoom out a little bit, I don't necessarily need to see this as big as I need to see my paint surface. Okay, this is what I'll actually be painting on. And the first thing I want to do is rename the background blank canvas. So I'm not calling it blank white. It's just the blank canvas. And I want to be careful not to paint anything on that. Because I want to separate whatever I paint from any background behind it. So what do I do? It means I lock it with the padlock. And then I make a new layer on top. And on this layer, I'm going to just put in my sketch layer. 
It depends how you want to paint. Again, you can paint with just shapes. You can paint with a sketch first. When I'm doing kind of humans, I like to sketch first. And I'm going to zoom in on this guy. Oops, not that one. Because I like this kind of angle a little bit. So on my sketch layer, I'm going to stay on this file. I'm going to use my brush. And it doesn't really matter what color I use, but I'm going to pick it in the foreground color selector. I'll use kind of a, a purplish gray. Why not? And I'm going to set it at an opacity of about 70%. I don't want full opacity. And then I'm going to, this is very important. We're going to be using this brush tool for almost everything in digital painting. So these tool options at the top. This is a pretty common way to set it up. About 70% opacity, about 100% flow. Normal mode. So it's all predictable. But then your brush, I'm just going to start with a very typical pressure sensitive round brush. But I want to make it large enough that when I push hard on my tablet, it fills up the whole circle. It feels like it's really covering some space. And I want to make it hard enough that it return, retains its edge but not so hard that it just looks like it's cut out, right? So I'm going to make it around 70% hardness and around maybe 200 pixels large for this resolution. I like to think of it as the size of a pencil eraser. All right, now I'm just going to start sketching it in on this sketch layer. I'm going to start with some basic shapes, some circles, some ovals, some wedges, and I'm going to try to find where the lines are for the eyes. It's funny, last semester I did a portrait of my dog, like as a human, as kind of a military general. Now I'm making a human more into a dog. So it's just what's on my mind. And when you're drawing for sketching for people, it's good to keep in mind that realistic proportions leave five eyes across the skull from here to here. There's five eye lengths. That leaves one eye length in the middle. And then between that eye length is the width of the nose. And the nose is roughly attaches halfway down from the eye line to the chin. The eye line is about halfway down the, the head. This is all just kind of portrait drawing techniques. These things can be looked up. What's a little bit more individual for people is how their, their lips fall on the bottom half of their face. And so his lips are about one third of the way down from the bottom of the nose to the chin. He has a pretty prominent chin. So I'm just gonna kind of mark that in. I'm not gonna get hung up on the glasses because I wanna use a different design of glasses anyway. I wanna find where the top of his skull is, about there. And then I want to figure out the hat. That's so distinctive because it needs to fit over the skull. And what's nice about doing something like a character like Werewolf Waldo is I don't need to worry about making this person recognizable. In fact, it's better if I don't, but I can can be inspired by by that example and by the hairline. Now this head looks a little a little uh, narrow and tall to me. So once I've kind of sketched in the neck, which comes from the base of the ears, and figure out kind of the neckline a little bit, I don't think I'm going to do all the, the backpack and snorkel kind of attributes. And I don't know yet how I'm going to turn it into a werewolf. You know, I might change the nose. I'll definitely kind of change the mouth. I'm just doing basic layout right now. But what I can do is already on this sketch, the reason we separate it onto a different layer is I can hit Command T, and then I can right click, and I can warp, and I can kind of push and pull my sketch a little bit. So if I feel like it's a little too narrow, I think his shoulders are too narrow. I can widen those, especially if I'm going to turn him into a werewolf and then kind of pinch in here.
Yeah, and I can position it a little differently. Hit return. So I took it from this sketch, which was fine, felt good while I was doing it. But once I played with warping it, realized that this was better. Now I might recenter my sketch, move it a little bit. or even just shrink the whole thing a little bit proportionally. So I have room to, to grow. So if you're doing a human, I want you to do it from the shoulders up. I don't want you to try to do the whole body. That's a lot. And it's, most of the skill is gonna be shown in the face. You can always add a body later. And if you're doing an animal, I do want you to do it from head to toe on just a blank background. All right, next I'm gonna do a new layer. This is not, digital coloring behind line art. So I go on top of my sketch layer. I can even lock my sketch layer if I'm worried about accidentally painting on it. And now we go into the, the shape painting stage, or sometimes called the underpainting. So shape painting can be done with the same kind of brush. That's what I'm gonna use now. But then any more refinements on that, it's good to customize your brush to get kind of a texture or a feeling that you want. And now for the shape painting, I'm gonna zoom in a little on this. And I'm gonna keep this fairly small so that each movement makes sense. I'm gonna keep the same kind of brush size. If anything, maybe make it a little bit bigger, more like 400 pixels instead of 200. And I'm gonna keep it at 70% opacity, 100% flow, 70% hardness, but now I'm going to hold down option and steal colors. And that's going to push that color into my foreground paint. And because it's at 70%, I'm going to cover up my sketch when I paint, but not cover it up entirely. And the colors I choose will only go at 70% because sometimes those colors will seem really, really strong and dark. But you see how they overlap with each other? So this isn't a very creative stage. This is just a, a stage of blocking in, color blocking. And each time you put down a shape, it shapes what's around it. So I don't need to spend a lot of time erasing or refining my sketch. Because the more I build up, just like in traditional painting, the more what's underneath it gets covered up. I like that he has kind of bags under his eyes. I can definitely exaggerate that for the werewolf aspect. But right now I'm just trying to, to get rid of the whites. It's my kill whitey face. And it shows me even in a pretty bland skin tone in this kind of costume picture, there's a lot of tonal variations that can be played with, even if I'm just stealing color. Sometimes I'll just steal the white from my background using option because it's only at 70% and then layer on top of it. And then I can always steal from my own colors to get these kind of tonal variations. Now this is what's called rendering, kind of turning something two-dimensional into the illusion of something three-dimensional. And it gets easier with practice. And put in some of these bold colors before this video ends. And that's what we'll pick up next class. And we'll start customizing brushes. And some people choose to do this kind of color blocking, shape painting without even taking the time to do a sketch because you kind of find your way as you go. So whatever works for you.